eaten dinner with some of the youth in our congregate programs. Um, did it over a series of days and weeks. And I got to know this fellow, I probably ate dinner with him three times. But we were having difficulty finding a place for him to go and he couldn't go home. And uh, so finally we found a, a level of care that could suit his needs that was not as restrictive. And so it was time for him to go and I stopped by to say goodbye to him. Um, and he gave me one of his matchbox cars. And what it impressed upon me is that these youth have so little and yet they can still have the capacity to be generous. All of his items fit in a single suitcase and he was able to give one uh, to somebody who apparently had made an impression on him. Um, and it just made me feel good. I had fostered a young girl for several years and about two years into that journey, uh, we were approaching Mother's Day. She gave me a card and in the card wrote how much she appreciated me and the things that I had been able to help her with and do for her. And that was just such an awesome feeling for me. 50 years ago, um, we had a promotion where we filled a car full of candy. When the promotion was all over, I had a car full of candy that I wasn't really certain of what to do with. And someone suggested that I bring it up to the House of Good Shepherd and give it to the kids up here. Well, when I delivered that candy that day and saw how much it meant, it certainly was a emotional moment. I realized then how much the House of Good Shepherd really meant to the children that were here. The, the day I got adopted was probably one of the the most best memories I ever had. Coming from the upbringing I had, I think it was a good memory just due to the simple fact that, you know, I could have been so many places, you know, and I, I had the, the choices and the options and really happy to just get adopted. When I first came, we were primarily a, a residential agency with almost everything here on campus. Um, very small foster care program, small education program. Over the years, we've added so many different programs, um, built this campus, added buildings. So the changes have been very dramatic. We transition to a more therapeutic milieu, a more therapeutic approach to our children, because I believe more in that type of approach than even medications, and I'm a child psychiatrist, so it's, um, better way of dealing with their pain and their past trauma. Yes, I have seen positive changes. I think uh, administration and management and actually the whole team has allowed us to, to um, have a say at the table, so to speak, with these children. I think they're extremely open to allowing us to do things outside the box. My number one thing, it does change their lives, it does, and we, we see that. I remember when uh, I was here, we had five group homes out in the community, and in one year we had to close them all um, and find different uh, treatment programs for the 50 kids that were in those. Uh, that was a big, big adjustment, but that's the kind of thing that you have to be able to do in order to be successful, in order to meet the needs of your community. The most important thing is the child. It's not my ego, it's not my degree, it's not my diploma, it's not the foster parents, or it's not the other staff, um, ego or, or, or our ideas, no, it's the child. Some of the steps that we're taking to create organizational resilience really come down to first, having a sustainable business model so we can continue to provide care uh, for, the, for the youth that we're committed to. And secondly, I would say that we have to be willing to reinvent ourselves when new needs emerge or new opportunities emerge um, to serve this population of kids. And I would say lastly, um, but probably most importantly, we need a workforce of people and a bunch of foster parents that are willing to run through a brick wall for a kid. And if you do that, we'll be around here forever. I believe there's a family for every single one of these children that are in foster care. And I hope that 150 years from now, the House of Good Shepherd is still providing a family home. Well, I think the House of Good Shepherd is 
is uh, more important to us now than it ever has been in the last 50 years. With the social unrest that we have today and the, the divide that we have today in, in our communities, um, these children really need somebody to guide them the right way and uh, uh, educate them properly and get them going on the path to life that uh, they can enjoy. A strong organization can't survive without the people doing the work, really caring about the cause. And I think the past 150 years, they've really been able to nail that. So if that can be executed in 150 years from now, we'll all be in a good place. I still believe that the most important thing is the human factor, the human component. And I believe that the House of Good Shepherd, as long as they continue to hire and train staff that truly care for the well-being of that teenager, of that child, for the future of that population, that's going to be the greatest tools that the House of Good Shepherd will have 150 years, 300 years from now, regardless of what improvement we can find in technology or in techniques or in laboratories or x-rays or even medication. 150 years from now, uh, the agency definitely should still be providing um, kids that are just reaching out with open arms that need that love and support. Uh, that definitely make me happy knowing that the ones that can't talk have a voice. In 150 years, I hope that we remain committed, wholly committed, to serving the most vulnerable children in any of our communities. I think that there are plenty of opportunities to go in different directions, to serve different people, or to do it different ways. But I think that they need us. And I can't think of anything more important, more gratifying, than preserving the innocence of a child and making sure that that child has an opportunity to grow, be happy, right, and be successful. So I hope that we remain focused on that in 150 years. I see skies of blue and clouds of white The bright blessed day and the dark sacred night and I think to myself What a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more. I'll never know And I think to myself What a wonderful world And I think to myself What a wonderful world